Hello guys. So in this video I want to share my approach on making cell shader. Uh, most of you may find it similar to very common approach that you can find on the internet, except one thing that I have a little trick to make it easy replicatable and also quite versatile. So let me show you uh, how does my shader look. So actually those bunch of nodes uh, it's actually all that you need to replicate. The magic here, uh, if you haven't seen my previous video, please check it. It's multicolored fog. So the same idea is to use uh, Curve Atlas. Curve Atlas, it's uh, an array of linear curve, linear color curves. So you may think of like a little tables, but except of this, uh, it's much more versatile because uh, you don't need to like quit uh, Unreal Engine and uh, you can modify the curve inside engine itself. So it's uh, also runtime and you can see uh, the results uh, just in a few seconds. So here we have our scene. Now we apply our post process and you may see that it looks, it looks much more stylized. So one more time, like this and like this. Also, uh, this uh, shader uh, works with uh, point lights. So uh, basically, basically, a lot of approaches uh, use uh, the method where you can see that you have the cell shader, right? But uh, if you take a look at the point light that uh, was here a second ago, right now uh, we have intensity, but we don't have uh, any color. So, uh, just one second. And if we try to put it somewhere here to see the uh, reflection on our sphere, you may see that it's a uh, solid white color. So, that's why my approach is better and, as you see, it's also uh, very compact. And now we have our colorized reflection from our point of light. And cell shader works perfectly fine. So, what's next? So, back to our shader. Uh, the main principle of how this cell shader works uh, is just to extract the light information from our buffer and uh, divide it into bands. Then we need to multiply uh, our color uh, into those bands and we have cell shader. Basically it comes with the three bands. So we have the neutral color, um, highlighted area and shadowed area. Uh, to make it work we need to have the post process input zero and diffuse color. This one is our final color with lighting information and this one is simple color, the raw data. We need to saturate them both so we have the grayscale values and dividing each by other will receive the range from 0 to 1 with the depth of our scene. So it's actually the light buffer. So we try to apply it to our scene. You may see that now we have sorts of uh, grayscale image where we have shaded areas, neutral areas, and uh, highlighted areas. So, back to our shader. To make it work with the bands, we can use um, loop tables, or in my case, I use the curve. Curve here, as you can see, it comes from 0 to 1. So basically, when we provide the proper time, uh, all the curve will work totally fine. And top points are the RGB. Uh, they uh, use as we, we use them as uh, the bands for making the grayscale um, gradient, or we can uh, make them colorized. So, uh, for instance, our initial uh, scene will be like the default one, and for the highlighted and for our shadowed areas, we can make them a little bit. Uh, bluish or yellowish or pinkish and 
uh, it's up to you to decide what color of shadows and highlight areas you want to have. And alpha here is the power of our effect. So we can have uh, like very intense cell shader or uh, just a little bit. So idea here is to have our final color lurped between these modified uh, calculations and from alpha channel of our curve atlas, we define the power of how it is lurped. So whether it's full uh, effects from our cell shader or whether it's uh, a simple percentage of it. So this approach, as you can see, uh, works with our sky. For instance, by default, uh, if you take a look at uh, default, as I said, uh, variant of how cell shader works, let me apply it here and um, let's actually go to other project here. I'll apply our cell shader and here I'll show you uh, the default uh, variant of it. So I'll explain why this one is actually uh, unpinned. So if you try to put the default variant, you may see that we have cell shader applied, but our sky is actually dark. So a lot of people use this one uh, operation where we need to divide our scene depths uh, with the particular uh, number of units in the world. So it's 100,000 units. And then we check whether this information is higher than one. Then we go with our default color. So it's our sky. Whether it's false, we are actually having our uh, post process, our cell shader. But with my approach, when we just need to multiply our final color uh, to the result of this calculation and then we lerp everything together, we can simply withdraw this one, have only this part, and when I apply everything, you may see that we have cell shader that works totally fine and we have our sky. So we don't need to have anything else, no more logic. Also, as you can see, uh, it works with uh, sort of metal and glass uh, materials. So, uh, as I told you, uh, this approach works fine with uh, metal, sky, uh, point lights, other lights and uh, glass. So if I try to launch the demo and you can see that when I try to overcome my spheres, you can see that I have reflection, I have bands, I have glow uh, element on the side of my sphere, also for the my cone. Now let's go back to the guys and you may see that we have shadow, we have bands, all of them. So yeah. So guys, the last part of the tutorial is to tell you how to work with curves, curve atlas and how to implement everything inside uh, the, the project. So first of all, you need to create uh, in your content browser two elements or more. It de depends on you how, uh, how many of uh, curves you need to have. So first one, curve atlas, then the curve. Once you created curve, you need to select curve linear color. Then you need to open up your curve atlas and here add your newly created curve. Back to our shader. Here we need to search for curve and select curve atlas raw parameter. Next here we define default atlas. I have one and here I define a default curve. So once you've done this one, you need to create material instance of your post process like this, sorry, like this one. And from this top down, you can select uh, your newly created curve. Uh, I took this one as new level for demonstration. Now I apply my cell shader and you may see that nothing happens because uh, this curve that I created uh, minutes ago, this one, 
has this sort of gradient. To make it work, we need to add more points. So those points are for tint of our bands. Then we need to add points to the opacity or the uh, power of each band. Next, we need to select, let's go with the color version of it. So we have this one, let's go with this one and maybe with this color. And as you may see, we have this sort of interpolation between of each color. And when we try to launch the game, you may see, sorry, let's go with this one. We have sort of a uh, Far Cry <laughs> game where we have like uh, one, two, three, four, five, five bands. And uh, some of them are applied to our shaded area. Some of them are applied to our highlighted areas. Also, uh, how it's actually work. So the uh, values that come from zero are for the shaded areas. And when they reach one, it's for the highlighted areas. So when we uh, select our points and try to change uh, their position on this line, we're actually changing how uh, our scene is colorized. So let me actually get this one here. Scene goes here and I'm gonna change the order. And you may see how our uh, shaded area comes uh, more to be uh, on the neutral or lead area. So, like this and like this. But, uh, as you can see, let's go back to our graph. Uh, that's not the result that we want to achieve. So we need to deal, uh, somehow to deal with this sort of uh, interpolation. We need to select all of our points, RGB and our alpha, and come from linear interpolation to constant interpolation. And now we have bands. So now you can see that we have this sort of effect. And, uh, yep, we can define uh, opacity of each area of each band like this and let's go with yellow one like this so it's up to you to decide uh, how to work with it uh, let me show you how it looks with the default uh, variant of it with not here but here with three colored version of cell shader Something like this. So without post process and with it. Whew. So thank you for your time to watch my tutorial. Uh, I hope you like it. And as always, if you want to support me, I have Patreon. So also please subscribe to my channel, leave your feedback, uh, press like button and see you soon guys.